The Hearn City Council is at a standstill with members not showing up to vote. Plus, we have an update on the bridge that a crane crashed into in College Station this afternoon. And why some Bryan businesses are preventing minors from buying e-cigarettes, even though no legislation requires them to do so. Living here, working here. This is KXHD News at 10. Well, we've all heard of national government shutting down and Congress at a standstill, but what if it happened right here in our own backyard? It's an ongoing situation in the city of Hearn. The council has been unable to make decisions because of a couple of voting members not attending several meetings. KAG's HD News reporter Tashara Parker has been following the story and talks to some of the council members and Hearn's former mayor about the ongoing issues. Really and truly nothing is going on. That's our problem. It's a problem that started in the city of Hearn a few weeks ago when council member Maxine Vaughn was removed from her seat after a recall election by the newest three members of city council. One of those members is Joyce Rattler. We um, cannot get a quorum to take care of any business. The city is just at a standstill. That's because Mayor Ruben Gomez and Councilperson Mike Worlinger have not attended the past three meetings since Vaughn was removed from office. One, a regularly scheduled meeting, and the other two were special called meetings. According to the Hearn City Charter, Section 3-10, under Rules of Procedure, any called meeting must have a quorum of at least four members. With only four members on council now, the three attending members are unable to reach any quorums or, in other words, make any decisions to handle city business without Worlinger or Gomez showing up. We're a home rule city, and it is a law that we have to go through and discuss an action taken uh, for the accounts payable. And I'm deep concerned about that because businesses need to be paid, contractors need to be paid, banks need to be paid, etc. We spoke to the former mayor of Hearn, Milton Johnson. He says the missed meetings stem from a much larger issue. They have this fear of they will be replaced. You know, the, these people, uh, the city attorney, the city manager, uh, certain other city officials, you know, they, they, they have high salary jobs with no accountability. We also reached out to the city attorney, Brian Russ, who we were told to contact because other city officials did not wish to comment, including the city CFO. Russ referred us to the city charter, which states Hearn is a council manager government. In section 4-1C, the city manager is responsible for preparing the budget annually, submitting it to council, and administering it after adoption. This means the city manager is able to take care of certain business within the budget without additional council approval. The budget has nothing to do with accounts payable. The, the, the budget was voted on in September, I believe, but um, accounts payable runs from month to month. And she says those month to month bills need council approval, which they have not been able to reach without at least four members present at the meetings. In Hearn, Tashara Parker, KX HD News. KX has submitted an open request for finding out which bills aren't getting paid, but haven't received that request yet. We should also note, we reached out to the Hearn mayor, city manager, city attorney, and the city CFO, but none of them provided KAGS with an official statement. The next meeting is scheduled for Thursday, March 26th, so council members are waiting to see if either Worlinger or Mayor Gomez will show. Time now for our first check of the weather. Meteorologist Andy Anderson is in for Bob tonight. How's it looking out there, Andy? Starting to see some wildflowers around Central Texas. A couple of blue bonnets this morning. We're starting to look very spring-like across Southeast Texas now. Strong gusty winds and lots of sunshine this afternoon help dry things out for us. We're satellite and radar, Doppler radar here together and very quiet for us this evening. Looks like it's going to stay quiet for probably another 24 hours. We do start introducing some rain chances into the outlook for us late tomorrow night and early into Thursday. Right now we've got a good fetch of moisture coming in off the Gulf of Mexico. Dry line is going to recede out to the west of us. Tomorrow starts working its way back and as it works its way back the showers could start developing out across west Texas. But for us, quiet conditions for us. Here's the first look forecast. Clear skies tonight and early tomorrow morning. 61 degrees for the overnight low tomorrow afternoon. Very windy but lots of sunshine. High getting up to around 81. Complete details of the forecast coming up a little later in the news. Andy, thank you. Developing news tonight as police identified the man seen in surveillance video from Drew's Exxon on March 17th, around the same time Kevin Garcia was beaten and kidnapped. College Station police say investigators are speaking with that person and he is assisting them. 
Police say tips from the public and media coverage helped identify the man. College Station Police ask anyone with information to call them at 979-764-3600 or you can call Brazos County Crime Stoppers at 979-775-TIPS. And Nathaniel Tillery, the man arrested for kidnapping Kevin Garcia, makes his first court appearance today. Tillery was supposed to choose his lawyer. Instead, he asked Judge Kyle Hawthorne for more time. Tillery has not decided whether to hire his own lawyer or have one appointed to him by the court. The judge gave Tillery 10 days to decide. He will be back in court on April 2nd. And new tonight, Bryan police released surveillance video of an aggravated robbery and they need the public's help identifying the suspect. Bryan police say this African-American male robbed the Shell station at 890 North Harvey Road Parkway around 420 in the morning on March 11th. Police say the man shows a gun and demands money, then runs away on foot with an undisclosed amount of cash. No employees were hurt and there were no customers at the time. Police say he was wearing a dark colored top and light colored pants. Anyone with information should call Bryan Police at 979-209-5300. And another armed robbery caught on camera. Washington County Crime Stoppers asking the public's help to find the people involved. As you can see by these pictures, the suspects held the convenience store clerk at gunpoint inside the store on Highway 36 Friday night. If you have any information about the suspects that leads to an arrest and indictment, you could receive at least $1,000. If you have any information about the crime, call Crime Stoppers at 979-836-8477. Right now, all lanes of University Drive and Wellborn Road in College Station are open. They were closed late this afternoon after a crane traveling on University Drive hit the bottom of the Wellborn Bridge overpass. That damage forced TxDOT to call in a structural engineer. TxDOT says the northbound outside lane of FM 2154 will remain closed for a couple of days. Well, so Bryan Roads will get a facelift in the coming months after the city council approved almost $2.3 million to be used for capital improvement in the city. Council members tried to decide whether asphalt or concrete was a better solution for fixing the roads. The council decided that based on the mileage and the number of roads to be improved, the asphalt would be more cost effective. The city will hear another proposal in April to fix other roads with concrete. Well, e-cigarettes have become a popular new way to smoke, but the city of College Station made an ordinance that bans minors from buying or smoking e-cigs. Now, Bryan businesses are doing the same without a city ordinance. KAG's HD news reporter Ian Smith shows us why Bryan businesses are taking a stand without legislation in place. With e-cigarettes being a newer alternative to smoking the real thing, Ernie Garcia's doors see a lot of traffic. It's fairly, it's fairly busy. I mean, popular. I sell quite a bit. With more flavors than a snow cone stand, it's no wonder e-cigarettes are popular. But at this shop, not everyone can have a taste. I'm not selling to any miners, not letting any miners in. And it's, it's sad to see kids, you know, want to try to fit in with the other people. Of the places we've been to in Bryan, we found one common reason why they won't sell e-cigarettes to minors. And it's simple. They say they're bad for you, and they don't want young people getting hooked. There's so many reasons the kids, they don't want a kid to start smoke and everything, and it's not good for health. I think it's the right thing to do not to allow kids to smoke. It's, it's bad. It's been proven. So we don't, we don't encourage it. Even though e-cigarettes contain vapor instead of smoke, they do have something in common with the real thing, nicotine, a drug that could get teens hooked. Today they can smoke uh, E, tomorrow they're going to smoke real one. Say, so, oh, it's not strong enough, let's buy that one. And with new state laws being considered, laws that would make it illegal for minors to buy or smoke e-cigarettes, Ernie Garcia says things won't change at his store. I just try to abide by the law, so if they say don't sell the minors, we're not going to sell the minors. So for now, businesses in Bryan can sell e-cigarettes to minors. They just choose not to. In Brazos County, Ian Smith, KX HD News. Even though minors can purchase e-cigarettes in Bryan, that's not the case in College Station. Violators in College Station will have to pay a fine if they're caught with e-cigarettes. Still to come on KAG's HD News, we'll have a full look at your forecast. And Angelina Jolene makes a life-changing choice to avoid cancer. And a local doctor weighs in on Jolene's choice. We'll have more in that story coming up on KAG's HD News at 10.